know if you guys have heard this. Like, this is one of the objections that you usually get. Oh, but this company has living benefits. <laughs> it always irritates me, but I'm going to train on that because I've all overcome it every single time, okay? So the more you know, the better you can overcome, right? So as it says, living benefits, you don't have to die to use. That's the catchphrase, right? Oh, you know, with term insurance, you don't die within, you know, the term, you lose all the money, right? True, right? But um, they don't really get into detail, which I'll get into in a minute. But what is a living benefit? It's basically known as an accelerated benefit in a life insurance policy that you can access some of the money from the death benefit while you're still alive, okay? Um, sometimes it comes with an extra cost, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends on the car. Now, um, the examples of the living benefits, right, aside from the cash value, this is what people are, you know, really looking into. Terminal illness, and I put an asterisk there because that is already included in our policies, okay? Uh, there's critical illness, uh, chronic illness, long-term care, critical injury, okay? So what do they say? Oh, if you get this and that, you can still get money, okay? But um, some companies do, that have term insurance do offer the living benefits, but they are very emphasized in all these cash value policies, especially universal life insurance. Okay, I lost my okay. the truth is, okay, that these policies, if you use the living benefit of the policy from the death benefit, it can reduce or completely eliminate the death benefit in the policy. And I've seen this, okay? So then, you know, let's just say the client has a critical illness, right? They qualify for it, but somehow they survived it, right? At death, if they're not financially independent, what is the family going to get? Nothing, right? And they, they want to twist it because what do we do? We say a living benefit is something you don't have to die to use, that's why we invest, right? Now, it still may be a taxable event, okay? This is what they don't tell you, right? Number three, and this is really important, is the insured must actually meet the criteria of how they define the illness, okay? Um, and it can also interfere with their eligibility for public assistance programs that you actually already paid for through your taxpayer's money. I'm gonna give you a real example. Um, I, I talked to a client, he, she's not my client, but I talked to an agent of our, one of our competitors and she was very new to the business. She had one of those IULs that um, had had the living benefit and she was diagnosed with cancer, right? Now, she's on Medicaid, okay? So now I said, do you realize that if you actually qualify for that benefit, you're gonna lose the Medicaid, so then where's your health insurance? She's like, I really? I said, yeah, and I showed it on her policy. She was like, they didn't tell me this, I said, because they think that you're gonna read the policy, or actually, they don't think you're gonna read it. So by the time you catch it, it's, it's kinda too late sometimes, okay? And can you go back real quick? Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Go back, all right. So it can eliminate or reduce the death benefits. Right. So let's say someone has, these policies are usually small death benefits, because mm -hmm. it's expensive. Like 100,000. Right? 100,000. Yeah, okay, so let's say it's a 100,000 death benefit, and someone buys it, not just for life insurance, but because if they get cancer, it's gonna be covered. If they get, what is another chronic illness? Uh, heart disease, heart, 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 heart disease stroke. stroke. Okay, uh, so, so explain this. So the policy, someone gets a stroke, the policy steps in and pays for their care for that time. How much is that care gonna cost? It's very expensive. Like, like long-term care can cost between 2,000 and 6,000, depending on how, you know, how needy you are. Per month or per month. right? Yeah. Okay. So let's say it goes on for you know six months, six thousand dollars a month. Then you've used thirty six thousand. But now what you're saying is that your hundred death. If you live past that, your hundred death benefit is now give to zero or just a little bit left. Right. I've literally had seen a client that showed me where the death benefit was fifty thousand. The option was to get seventeen thousand, but at that, no money is going to be given. Mm -hmm. So I said, where's the thirty two? Right, but of course it's all in the fine print. So these people have to be very, very careful. They just assume that everything's okay. They assume that it's a three in one, right? They have the death benefit, they have the, 
the, the visibility that they call, and they also have the cash value. Yeah. But it's one or the other. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I always I always advise my clients to make sure that if they have a job that is offering these, you know, long term, um, what you call it, long term visibility, short term, to make sure they have it, especially if they don't have an emergency fund yet. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Yes. All right. So now let's show some proof. So um, I want you to pull that up. I recently got another policy. Um, actually, this was already a client of mine, and she said, Sheila, I want you to take a look at this. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so, um, Expectations of future anticipated or emerging experience. 
but are subject to any minimums and maximums stated in the policy or rider and all that. Okay. Um, okay. The expected life is go up. Okay. Um, it's about time. Yeah. What expected? Oh. Oh, okay, here, here. Conservative benefits are not guaranteed the assumption which they're based, right? Uh, are something changed by the term based on expecting in the future, disability, but are something to any minimums. Future anticipated or emerging experience can include investment earnings, mortality, the number of levels, da da da. da. Actual results may be used. There's something else that I saw. Oh, when determining. The discount, the discounted death benefit for critical illness and critical assessment of the future life expectancy, expectancy of the insured will have four different levels depending on the severity of the mm -hmm. critical illness or critical injuries applicable. Okay. Let me see what else. Oh, by the way, <laughs> they love to emphasize the cash value. Okay. So this is part of the you know living benefit, right? So here. You got, you know, this kid after 40 years paid $48,000, 40 freaking years, and still did not Jeez. make any money. The guarantee is 32000 And still, <coughs> after paying for 56 years, paid in 66000 there's no cash value and there's no insurance. So is it permanent? No. What do they like to tell clients? This is a lifetime benefit. It's a lifetime benefit, you pay more for. <laughs> That's what it is. But this is what people get away with. They in and they out. They in and they out. But we got to get after them. But you got to get really good at reading these policies. The fine print is there. You just have to say, hey, client, look at this page and look at this page. I'm like, oh, they never told me that. Because they don't want you to know. Because if you knew that, would you still buy it? No. So what is the solution? By term and best of difference. Set up, set up an emergency fund, set up a short-term uh, short um, investment account, and short, set up long-term, right? You gotta make sure that the short-term, long-term goals are also um, set for the, for the clients. And mind you, okay, I've been also a lot of people, social security benefits, you know you pay for that no matter what, right? They deduct 6.2% of your paycheck, right? And your employer pays 6.2%. Now. If you have 40 credits and you become disabled, right, you are allowed to actually get a benefit for the rest of your life. Does anybody, everybody know that? Okay, now why is that important to know by these clients? Because if they die, what happens to the social security benefit? It's gone with a wind, okay? The only time anybody can benefit from that money is if you have a child under 18, they'll get a benefit until they're 18, or perhaps, Let's say you have a spouse that has a lower benefit, then the, the, the living spouse will have to drop the lower amount and just keep the higher amount of the two. So if you can't use it, right, if they're gonna say that it could potentially affect your eligibility for supplemental security income or social security, why am I discrediting myself from something that I already paid for? Right? Yes. All right, question. <coughs> And by the way, investment accounts again, you have to die to use it. And, <laughs> and there's more. <laughs> for, your, um, for your 401ks, all retirement plans, regardless of the type, if you become disabled, that is one of the exclusions. They will waive the 10% penalty so you can access the money. These fools do not have a securities license, or we do know people that have it, but because you know, if somebody starts a 200 pack, it's like a, well, how much commission? Maybe less than $5 a month. Where if they put a $200 IUL, they can make 1000 to $2,000, okay? So I just met somebody, that, I mean, I didn't meet them, but I, I you know, I had a client meeting with, a, with uh, somebody who had, um, was sold the term insurance and an IUL by a securities license individual. Mm -hmm. It made me sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, I looked him up. The <laughs> Lupino. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, any questions? No. Thank you.